The focus on the jazz image is Minnesotans and the arts of jazz, and that was composer and keyboard artist Bobby Lyle, and the title theme for that new Atlantic uh, CD of his entitled Ivory Dreams. And all of it is a signal for a program Sunday night at the Guthrie, a tribute to Dr. Reginald Buckner. Bobby, it's good to have you back in Minnesota. Welcome in. Thank you, Lake Hammond, and how are you? It's good to be back. I'm just fine. How about you? I'm doing great, keeping busy these days. Well, it seems you are involved in a great number of projects. Now, just the other day, Stanley Turrentine was passing through, and of course, his latest release features uh, at least two or three of your compositions as well as your keyboard work. And then you have your own projects. What else have you been up to? Well, at the present time, Lay, I'm right in the middle of uh, my brand-new album for Atlantic. We're about maybe two or three weeks from putting a wrap on it, and uh, I'm kind of excited about it. I feel like we've got a lot of great new tunes, and in fact, some of them we are actually going to premiere in our uh, performances at the Guthrie and the uh, Dakota. And that's this weekend. Of course, Sunday night... Uh at the uh, Guthrie and Monday night at the Dakota and Bandana Square in St. Paul, Minnesota. Well, you've been following the muse for I don't know how long, but you're, it seems to me in the last five years um, the, the composition side of your career has just uh, begun to blossom. Tell me about that. Well, I've, I've always been inspired to, um, to write my own tunes, and I guess it's like anything else. You know, the more you do it, uh, the more you're going to grow at it, and hopefully I'm, I'm still growing at it. I, uh, I, I still feel like a student in a, in a way in that I'm, I'm always learning things. Every time I go and sit down in my music room, something new is happening, uh, and that that's partly what keeps me excited and keeps me in, in the jazz field, you know, because it's growing and expanding, and... Uh, I think the people who who are not that familiar with jazz will find that the the kind of music that I'm doing these days is a good way to to get introduced to it. And you might uh, just qualify and explain that in more detail. Well, basically, uh, what I've done with a lot of my recent compositions is take uh, a lot of the rhythms from the uh, the urban and the R&B music, and and do the jazz riffs over the top of it, and uh, and the jazz form, you know, with with the different sections of the tune, bridges. We try to make interesting harmonic things happen, uh, and also keep the improvisation thing interesting. But we also like to have accessible rhythms that, like I mentioned, will draw in people who are not that familiar with jazz, but enjoy urban and other types of music. So in a way, we're sort of spanning a lot of bridges here, but I, I, I think it's it's a genre that really sprung up in the uh, 70s with Grover Washington and Ronnie Laws and, and people that I had the pleasure of working with back during that time. And uh, it's it's sort of become a lot more widespread now, and what it's done is it's increased the uh, audience for jazz music. And you have people like... Um, Kenny G and Grover Washington, who can who can get that million-selling album, you know, which used to be so unheard of. When I think about uh, the audience out there and uh, knowing a little bit about it, but not a great deal, and do you also have some other thoughts about how to expand the acceptance of jazz beyond uh, the mixing of your musical palette, you know, with the various uh, streams? What's another way to get at and build an audience? Well, I think just, uh, well, one, one way is to be more accessible to the media and, uh, you know, take time in the different cities to, to do your interviews and, and just talk to the writers and to the people about uh, what's happening musically, what you're trying to do. And... Uh, in performance situations to uh, to really give the people a show, you know, because sometimes uh, jazz musicians especially are, are known for just, uh, you know, not really being that communicative with the audience. And uh, I feel like it should be a, a celebration every, every time we perform, you know, and really get involved and get the audience involved with, with what you're doing.
you're doing. And uh, it becomes sort of like a, a community spirit feeling thing when we play. I remember doing a gig just recently in Detroit where the um, the club owner felt compelled to have a a vocalist in the show, which was no problem for me because, you know, on a couple of my albums I had a female vocalist sing some tunes, but it, it stemmed from the thinking that, uh, well, the people aren't really being totally entertained unless there's someone up front at the microphone doing vocals. And I think once they saw us perform, they, they changed that thinking because instrumental music can be very entertaining. It's just how it's uh, presented to the audience. On another tech, uh, Bobby Lyle, who in your background was a mentor or who was responsible for opening the door, giving you encouragement and moving you forward? Well, actually, I'll have to say it started at home because uh, my mom was a avid, and still is an avid jazz fan, and she introduced me uh, through people like uh, Sarah Vaughn, who just recently passed away, and uh, Jimmy Lunsford and Duke Ellington and Count Basie. She had a lot of records from these people, Billy Holiday. And uh, so I have to say it started at home. And also my mother's uh, brother, uh, my late uncle Thomas, used to come and visit us from Memphis, Tennessee in the, in the summer times. And uh, he'd always have an armful of the latest jazz releases. And uh, that's when I started to hear people like Oscar Peterson and the whole West Coast scene with Red Mitchell and Shorty Rogers and uh, the New York scene with Coltrane and Miles. So it was it was quite a way to get introduced, you know, to the whole field of jazz because uh, I always liked popular music and I would listen to the radio, but jazz was like a, a total new adventure to me. And uh, that's basically where it started at home. Thank you, Bobby Lyle. That was uh, just a, a wonderful insight in in your experience. I'm talking with um, Bobby Lyle, who will lead a tribute to Dr. Reginald Buckner at the Guthrie Theater on Sunday, April 22nd at 7 p.m. That's tomorrow at 7. And on Monday night, he'll be at the Dakota Bar and Grill in a special recital with a preview of some new materials. Thanks, Bobby. It's a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you, Lee, and I'm happy to be back home even just for a few days. Well, welcome back into the Land of Lakes. All right. We want to see you at the club and the show. All right. See you there. All right.